Today uh, is going to be Dylan Jorgensen. I'll invite him to approach the bench. Um, he co-founded one of the first companies uh, to transplant the Las Vegas to be a part of Tony Shea's uh, privately funded revitalization project. Uh, the goal of the, that downtown project is to build the most community focused large city in the world. In addition to being a startup CTO, Dylan also hosts a weekly podcast where he curates the news, events, and people driving the community forward. Uh, this has given Dylan a unique window into the minds and philosophies of a group who insist on throwing conventional wisdom out the window. Please give a round of applause. Nice, thank you. I don't know if you guys saw, but when Dominic asked about who's well-funded, you guys see Ethan raise his hand? I feel bad for his dad, you know? Anyways, uh, so I'm Dylan Jorgensen. I'm the CTO at TicketCake.com. Um, we are a startup out here that kind of competes with Eventbrite or Ticketmaster. But on my side project, in my free time, I created the Downtown Podcast with the help of a number of other people. And one of the first things that we noticed when we built this podcast was just how incredible, um, how much, how incredible it is that there's so much information going on with downtown Las Vegas and how hard it is to get your head around it all. And you know, our brains just really aren't wired for um, the magnitude of stuff that's happening. And the same way I envision that a, a fish wouldn't know that it's uh, the importance of the water that it swims in. I think that sometimes we don't all understand how many opportunities, how many people, and how many great steps forward we take as a community that sometimes you don't feel. And my solution to this was to throw everybody into my living room with a whole bunch of beer and then see if we could ask people to step back for a second and take a, an accounting view of the entire situation, of like the entire community as a whole. And to do this, we uh, tried to filter out each week the best um, news, the best people, and the best events and just compress them into something that's between 20 and 30 minutes, something that you can digest. And um, that, was, that was originally the goal. And... I want to talk to you a little bit about the process that we've gone through to, to try to solve this. So we have all this stuff that happens to all of us, right? And you know, it can be a huge range of things, whether it's events you want to go to or it's people you want to know. But there's constantly something you know you're missing, right, and no matter where you are. And that's a great thing because there's so much stuff to do, but that's also a little bit, you know, creates a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress. So what we do is we ask the community to inform us about everything that's going on. So we have a form on our website, the downtownpodcast.tv, where you can submit either an event, a person you think that's really important who's visiting or part of the community, or um, a piece of news that we might not have to our website, or you can email it to our producer. And then we sift through and we try to find what the most important thing is. And the, the very tough job of Jacqueline Jensen, also uh, with Ticket Cake, but she's the producer of the podcast is to sort through this each week and try to put together just the best 22 to 25 minutes. And she's done this consistently for 23 episodes, so thank you for that. Um, but once we get this, um, what we do is we actually bring people up to our living room, which is in the Ogden. It's in 1805, and uh, we only have about 40 spots, so you have to RSVP on our website, but everybody's just invited to come up. And when you get there, I want to walk you through kind of the experience. So you'll be coming to a room with about, uh, and by the way, this happens every Thursday at 9 p.m., um, but you end up coming to a room where we get about 30 people. It's about all we can handle. That's why we do the RSVP. And when you get in there, you're going to walk past it. The first thing you're going to see on your right is a timeline. And this timeline is a history of the major points that the community's gone through. And it has um, a really cool new touch to it, which is the fact that we added some augmented reality. So one of the cool things is if you have an iOS app, you can, uh, or an iOS device, you can actually download this app and you can hold it up and in real time get information about the startups, about the milestones. And then, of course, this is uh, community-based feedback, too. So if there is milestones we're missing or there's something you think we should be included, um, if it filters at the top 20%, we're definitely going to put it on there and uh, make sure we, we represent the community the best that we can. Um, after you get past this timeline, what you're going to do is you might, you might run into this guy. He's a dog with a GoPro stuck to his, to his back. It's Alexis's dog, Cuz, who's one of our best cameramen. Um, and you might come, and after that, you're going to come across the free beer. So we do uh, a sponsorship each week, which is $100 for somebody that kind of wants to get their name out there and contribute. And for that $100, we talk about them at the beginning of the podcast, and we use that to pay for the beer and a little bit of the uh, equipment and um, the cost of running the podcast. 
Um, after that, what's going to happen is you're going to end up sitting down kind of, kind of a similar place like this where we have a director who's going to talk about the guests that we have and kind of the experience that you're going to go through throughout the podcast. And once that happens, um, we actually just dive into it. And here's what's surprising. So we really are like just doing this out of a living room. Like this is not funded by um, the same fund that Ticket Cake is. This is just a project that people in the community have put together. And, this, and it's been able to pull in, I think, some pretty big names. You might recognize Kevin Harrington. He's one of the sharks from Shark Tank. He came to visit us. Um, this is uh, Dr. Omri, who built the uh, genome compiler. I think just one of the most cool programs ever. It's like an IDE for A, C, Ts, and Gs. Like, so you can actually program with DNA. Um, we had one of the uh, more famous um, news broadcasters from Las Vegas, uh, Dave Cravassier, came in. And um, we had him break down kind of the way that media is changing. He came into a living room to talk instead of a professional news studio and talked about how everything um, is changing. That was a lot of fun. And then most recently, we had Flavor Flav pop in to uh, have his vodka. Yeah. We <laughs> Pavel's got to be staring at me here, too. Love it. Um, but, but, you know, and this is cool, but I really didn't come, I mean, I think it's cool we get these kind of caliber of um, people to come talk, but that's really not the point. The point is to get the community. So I want to talk about some of my favorite stories that really are community generated, where when Nina came in, I don't know if you guys know this story, but her dog, uh, Mac, got stolen, right? She works for Fremont East Studios, and uh, it was on videotape, but a woman came and took this dog, and um, because the community all came together, because people on social media were aware of what this car looked like, because people were aware of the situation, they were actually able to track down this dog and get it back to her, which I don't, I don't believe that could have happened without a community that was extremely strong. It took a lot of eyeballs to bring her dog back. So this is one of my favorite stories. Um, another one is uh, actually Pavel right up here staring at me, but him and Susan uh, run the Sin Shop, the local maker space. And uh, this is a gift that they gave us. They actually used a 3D printer to print this out and... Uh, Oh, 3D cut laser cutter, excuse me. And, uh, but, it's, but it's cool. It's the centerpiece of our show now, and um, they custom made it, and you can actually put batteries in the back, and it can blink and dance and do all these cool lighting effects. And, uh, you know, those kind of things, we look at it, and it keeps reminding me of how much fun it is. And we had Amy Jo Martin on to um, talk about beer tricks, like things you could do just when you're drunk at the bar with people. And it's these little moments with these people that usually come up and speak about these great big topics that I think are so fun because it gives you a, a side of their personality that I think a lot of the other media won't focus on. And then we've got Ethan there too. He's, uh, he's our issue, our beer sponsor. He's our root beer sponsor. So congratulations. I'm glad he's got all that funding, you know. But uh, he has one of the youngest programmers around here and um, he's doing an awesome job with his app, uh, Lazy Husband. So, um, but what I wanted to say is that really what it comes down to is these people that help make it happen. So, um, Mike Cow is uh, somebody who came in at the very beginning and believed in this idea and put all the effort into making sure that the audio would be perfect. We had Melissa, who is our designer, Melissa Volkman, who has been a co-host and there from day one, and Jackie, who is our producer. She's still working right now filming this, and um, she's doing a great job, so thanks for all that. And then Adam and Dan. Adam was the uh, director, and he's been uh, somebody who lent me a lot of the equipment and got this podcast started. And then Dan Ebel, who's been there for everything that all those guys don't take care of. He t takes on a new form every time we meet. Um, and this is cool. But the one lesson I wanted to share with you is um, even though there's all these things we learned, right? We learned a lot about marketing. We learned a lot about filming. But the most important thing that we learned about was this concept of community gratitude. Now, what was really interesting is that when I started looking at the feedback from episode one, we're on the 23rd episode now, but from episode one, a lot of the feedback was pointing out that they thought the podcast was at the best when it brought something to their attention, some kind of benefit that the community has that they didn't know about. So as I started thinking about how we could incorporate that more, I was looking at gratitude and how you can really incorporate that into some kind of an event that can make people get that same feeling. And there's a lot of fascinating studies. So it turns out that um, people who have more gratitude than other people tend to be physically and mentally more healthy. People that keep a gratitude journal every week uh, tend to do better with energy. They tend to be more overall, or they be happier overall, and they find themselves more optimistic and more likely to get the jobs and um, things that they want out of life. So there's this big thing around it. And when I started looking back on the podcast, I can see that there is a clear uh, push towards this gratitude. When you look back, you can see we didn't have an audience, and we had an audience, and they keep creeping into the camera light, because that's really what matters, is we need to start pulling all these uh, great stories out and getting them in front of people. So I started this podcast, and what I thought the community needed was snapshots. Snapshots 
of this great story that we're in. But just like how you can have a gratitude journal that helps you see the big picture and stay more motivated each week, it turns out what this community really needed was a gratitude podcast, a way to keep the perspective of just how great the water that we swim in is. Thank you. All right, and then if there's any questions, you can answer them. I've got four minutes, but if not, oh, Alan, go for it. Ah, well, when you put Flavor Flav on, the number goes up to 25,000. But in general, we get about, about 500 people view it on YouTube, about 75 people download it on iTunes, and then, um, you know, we usually get about 40, 40, 50 people to uh, sign up for the podcast. But I, they're very important people because I think it is this community. If you look at the analytics, it all happens within 20, 30 miles from here. So. I was curious if you saw retentions like after Flavor Flav. Over to, well, we've only had one episode since then, but the newest episode, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, there could be a, a jump. I think we're up, up on this newest episode, but we also had a really interesting guest, too. And, yeah, I don't know. I'll let you know in the long, the long term how it goes. But we are growing every, every week, so we'll see. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah? What kind of stories are you looking for? Well, I mean, you know, I try, like, Jackie at the end of the day makes the decisions on what the most important thing is, but we try to go as, as unknown as possible. So I think we put, if, if we haven't heard the name of somebody before, if it's a project that's totally new, then I think that's like always the priority is to try to just discover something. And it could be wrong, it could be right, but it's always about just something different. It's always a big focus, but yeah, McVeigh. Favorite, favorite podcast moment. Yeah, well, I'm starting to love this one, McVeigh. Yeah, so, so Justin saw Flavor Flav in the airport a couple days ago and said, hey, saw you on the podcast. I thought that was cool, you know, because I'm sure that's the first person that ever came up and saw that. Um, yeah, oh, I, I spaced your question. What was it? Your favorite moment. Oh, my favorite moment. Oh, you know, I think uh, the, coolest, the, the coolest guest that first rattled my brain um, is always going to be most important to me. And we had a girl named, um, or a woman named Robin Farman Farmian come in from Singularity University. And if you guys know what Singularity University is doing out in California, it's unbelievable. I mean, they just work with these big, you know, these, these kind of big entrepreneurial ideas that have to affect at least a billion people. And when you're talking about, you know, genetic printing of food, when you're talking about uh, just the way the world might work in the next 20 years and how this exponential growth is really just not something we can get our hold on. That's the first time I um, had my brain, like, seriously rattled, like, seriously rattled. And that has just been stepping stones from then on. So I think Robin Farm and Farm, episode, episode six, I believe, six or seven. That was a good one. Yeah. Question and a comment. First comment, thank you, Dylan, and of course everyone else involved in the podcast. Um, like yeah. you said before, this isn't funded by anything, this is you doing something for the community. So Yeah, well, I mean, we get a lot of benefit out of it, too. I mean, I, I definitely grow a lot, and it's always been my goal to be able to be better at public speaking and, like, getting messages across. But, yeah, I mean, it really is a community effort, and nobody controls the message and except people that come to, come to see it. So. And question, uh, all told per episode, how much effort is involved? How many hours are probably involved? Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. You know, it used to take me probably, pro you guys are going to laugh, but it probably took me over 40 hours to edit the first episode and then, like, 30 and then 20 and then 10, you know. But now it's now the whole thing works pretty well. I think that all in all it takes about, like, seven or eight hours to, like, get the whole thing, like, kind of filmed and organized and... Jackie puts in five minutes every 25 minutes, so that kind of adds up too. But it's about a seven or eight hour project each week, so. Did everyone help? Yeah. You said you learned about marketing. Do you use social media for, to promote the podcast? And if so, what uh, is the biggest investment involved for uh, you know, so we get a lot, I got a lot of weird thoughts about how to how to market it because I'm not I don't I don't let the the view count really affect me too much. Like what I really think about is how how much I learned and how deep into the community we got. And I, I think that the vote of the people in the room is the biggest deal. So we do do social media mostly just to acknowledge like people and let them know that if they were on an episode or we talked about them, that we talked about them so we can get feedback. But we don't, you, we don't really blanket market. I mean, it really is for this community. It's not for everyone. So, OK. I think that's it for the question. So thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Real easy to get down on your community. So something about like that with giving everybody an attitude of gratitude towards our community is only going to do good things.